I'm not condemning you. I'm listen. I'm here because I love you, and I told you that off air. I'll say it on air. I'm here because I'm concerned. I'm here as a family member. I you still calling you get my phone number? You you it's, calling yourself a Christian <laughs> still as part of the family of God? Saying as I said in the blog, Jen, come um, home. Come I will say this back, to you again. Come out on air. I have spiritual leadership in my life. Yeah. The pastoral counsel of those who are dear to me, who understand the scripture as sacred text, and who also want to I'm invest sure in me. Do, Bob, don't Jen. interrupt me. You are not that man in my life. I agree. I'm speak not saying that I'm your spiritual authority. But you do not know me, and you don't have the right to speak to me in the but manner I, which you have publicly. Well, I do have a role to stand up for the truth. In your and congregation, in your community. Well, but do not, I, I ask I'm you a, not to do that. I ask you not to say that you are doing that on my behalf. I'm, I'm certainly, I'm here as a, as a representative of Jesus Christ. But and you are very judging. Good. You I are judging. That's, it that's reminds fan, me of the story, Larry, where, you know, there's this, in John chapter 8, and, and, you know, everybody comes rushing in and there's a lot of emotional, you know, heartbeat on both sides of the fence with this thing. And, and people said, this woman was caught in the act of adultery and the Old Testament says she ought to be stoned. What do you say? And they really try and put Jesus into a corner. And he very interestingly says, he, he was without sin, cast the first stone. I, I have sin in my life. I'm not sitting here as one so person. There's a pretty but massive Jesus implication looks that I cannot say that I'm both a lesbian and, and a believer. Listen, Jesus, in the, the rest of the story is what people are missing out on. I'm not here with stones. I'm not here with bats. Jesus looks at her and says, where are your accusers? And she says, they're gone. And he says, uh, he says neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Here's the difference. Jennifer's wanting to justify the sin. How did I, how did I first off, that's a, that's a very big premise. You, you assume that you and I both agree that homosexuality is one, a choice, and two, a sin. So to say that I have to justify it off that premise is inaccurate. Well, you, again, mine's you, based you hold... on the sacred writings of which you're saying your to which spiritual authority. Let, let me get a break, guys. Hold it. I disagree. That former former televangelist Ted Haggard has survived scandal, says today that he, has no longer, he no longer has homosexual thoughts. His take on all is next. I am a dream come true. Now I'm someone else who only wanted you. We're back with Jennifer Knapp, the Grammy-nominated Christian music artist, new album Letting Go, released in May. Pastor Bob Botsford, senior pastor, Horizon Christian Fellowship, San Diego. Joining us from Denver, Colorado, a previous guest on this show, always good to see him, Ted Haggard, former pastor of the New Life Church. A 2006 gay sex and drug scandal destroyed Ted's New Life megachurch ministry, shocked the evangel evangelical community to its core. All right, Ted, you've been listening. What are your comments? And then we'll get into specifics. What do you think overall here, of what we've heard? Yeah, I think both of them have some good points. I really appreciate what Jennifer's saying and what she's going through. And I think her big premise is that she's on a journey just like every one of us are. She accepts the fact that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, that God's working in us, that we have his scriptures to work with, and it is true. People read them differently and people interpret them differently. And the pastor has a point in saying it is his role as a pastor to try to be salt and light and represent the word the way it's read. I do think, though, that the important overall uh, message is that we emphasize personal relationship with God. And the core of everything that we say is this wonderful delight in who Jesus is and what he does. He accepts the fact that we've all fallen short. He accepts the fact that there are a broad range of sins. We humans say one's more important than another, but he talks about how all of it separates us. And he accepts the fact that we are all on a journey that won't be completed until we see him face to face. Uh, you have a so the pastor's right. In yeah. it, well, let me finish this. The pastor's right in that he sins. And Jennifer is right in that she sins. Both are saved by the grace of God. And it'd be good for him not to judge each other. You, I don't think Jennifer said she sins. You say you're not gay. You admitted to a gay experience. Do you, Ted, believe that homosexuality is a sin? 
I believe that when people don't fulfill God's perfect plan for their life, they're falling short and they're sinning. And I think people sin all day, every day, and that everybody, regardless of the complex nature of their sexuality or whatever, everybody needs the grace uh, of God. Okay, so therefore, Bob, you're as bad, if that's the term, <laughs> as Jennifer. Your sin may be different, but just different. Well, I just want sins and Why is her to... worse than yours? Larry, I think the, the difference here, if I can just point out, both with Jennifer and Ted, is this. There are all of us on planet Earth in the human race have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. All right. Jesus came to die in our place to forgive us of our sins, not so that we would remain in a sinful lifestyle, so that we would leave that life of sin that leads to death and be born again. The whole idea of being a Christian is that what I used to be, I no longer am. But you still sin. I, I make mistakes every day, you but sin, sin isn't ruling my life. Jesus Christ is ruling my life, and when I mess up, I can yeah. repent. So Jesus Christ can't rule her life if she's a lesbian. Well, listen, there's a, if someone is allowing sin, and sin is called out in the Bible, whether it's homosexuality, adultery, whether it's Stealing, well, the whole the list is there. Read it for Cheating yourself. Cheating on your income tax. Allowing that to continue to reign over your life is not allowing Jesus Christ to be Lord. I'm allowing Jesus Christ to be Lord. My role every day is to die to sin, not justify sin. But He, Jesus Christ, loves her. He does as much as well, He loves I, you. He loves well, everyone. I will say this. Genuinely mm -hmm. loves everyone. Not for everyone. a moment have I ever sat here and justified my individual path in this in my life. I'm not, I am not sitting here to try and tell someone that they have to walk the path that I walk. Please preserve that for me. But to call, but to, no, I'm, go ahead, Ted. Ted? Um. That, 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 that is a very, very important point because when the pastor says Jesus is Lord of his life, that is true, but he's still in process. It could be some other violations that he has, but the core of the Christian faith is a relationship with God where God lovingly walks us through. I had three boys come to Christ one time. One was immoral with his girlfriend, the other was a smoker, the other was a drinker. One was convicted of the sexual activity, the other was convicted, or, or they all had three of those things, in their, all three of those things in their life, but one was convicted of the sex, the other was convicted of the drinking, the other was convicted of the smoking. And as they've gone through the years, just as the pastor described, they've all become different people as they grow. That's happening in Jennifer's life, and it's happening in the pastor's life. Our role isn't just to call out one particular sin and say, all these people are in trouble. It, our role is to say we're all in a process and we need to encourage one another. So Jennifer has a group of believers she meets with. They study the scripture. They can go on that. They can do that process. That process obviously is not going to be um, but Pastor Bob's church. It'll be another group of believers, which is why we have a diversity right. of churches. And let me, on that note, let me get a break and come right back. Don't go away. We're back with Jennifer Knapp, Pastor Bob Botsford, Ted Haggard. We got a couple of great reads on our blog. See what Tim Urban has to say about his American Idol experience. He got the boot, by the way, Wednesday night. And Ray Johnson's story is an inspiring one. He's playing in the NBA one day in a coma next. All that on CNN.com slash Larry King. Pastor, do you all feel bad when you hear stories about people who kill gay people? Absolutely. Yeah, that's not the They've right response. They've gotten messages about how sinful that is, that they take it to that extreme. And you add to that, don't you? Well, I, ho I, I hope not. I mean, I you paint the picture. Right, now, you're the, in, in the Old Testament, I'm not about biblical scholar. You can't eat shellfish. Yeah. You eat shellfish? Absolutely. You're a sinner. No, I'm not. There's some things, Larry, that are very important to keep in context here. Although there are verses in the book of Leviticus that say, don't eat shellfish, don't wear clothes that have different materials on it, things that Jennifer has mentioned in the articles that she has given in the news of coming yeah, out. It's a casual. You know what? Um, why it guess what? <laughs> God, God changed his mind on shellfish. When you did he do what? that? Yeah, there's know, Bob, a wonderful God passage. God changed his mind on mankind, and he gave his Savior for one and for all. He changed his mind, if I can finish, in Acts chapter 10, to answer your question, Larry, on shellfish. And Cornelius has this amazing enlightenment as Peter has this vision of the Lord saying, eat whatever you want. And so... Um, Peter may have been hungry. There's this 
No there's pun intended. There's this grace that comes upon all of us no longer to live by the law of the Old Testament. But when you get to the issue of homosexuality, he doesn't change his mind on that. It what, flows over into the New Testament if, as if, powerfully as it gets, was in the Old Testament. Peter gets a vision about shellfish. What if Ted gets a vision about homosexuality that says, since it's not a choice, and as long as a person is observant and good, it is no longer a sin. Yeah, well, you God, didn't use Ted, Ted. God didn't use Ted to write the scriptures. And the scriptures that have been written or the scriptures that I go by... Nothing's being written today. Absolutely not. This is Stop. done. In fact, in the book of Revelation, we're told that there's a blessing upon those that keep what is written in this book and a curse upon anyone so, who would add to it or take away from it. Ted, it sounds like concept, wanting to take away from what the Bible says about Under that concept, Ted, your, your faith does not evolve, right? 